okay when you talk about course duration duration is two months so we started the batch yesterday june 2020 the course will end by july 2020 okay we started on first june close by 31st july 2020 this is the course duration when you talk about timings so now we are starting the classes at 8 am ist and we are running up to 9 30 am ist so these timings will follow up to this june ending from July onwards, we'll prephone the timings to 6 a.m. IST. 6 a.m. IST to 7.30 IST. So first of all, we'll complete the course within this two months because of some instance issues or some other issues if it is going to be delayed what we can do is maybe in the july month if required we'll have one or two weekend classes also we'll plan to run the sessions in the weekends if required but the actual schedule is the actual uh, class classes we run from monday to friday only. okay the classes from monday to friday okay, no classes on the weekends if required in the July month, we can plan, we can have a two or three weekend weekends also classes if required. But that is not an actual schedule. If required, if you have some issues with instance, if you think like it's going to get delay slightly to cover those, we can plan for the classes in the weekends also that will be in the July. So this is all about duration and timings. Okay, how we are going to and in this batch. Uh, could you also give outline what will be covered during this time? Yeah, that we discussed in yesterday's session. Okay. Uh, sorry, I wasn't there, but you can yeah. keep in touch with our team. They will share you the course curriculum also. Okay. Otherwise, okay. ask the team to share the course content with everyone. Right. Okay. Now let's jump into the actual discussions. During the discussions, if you have any questions, yes, you can stop me and you can raise your question. If you have any other questions related to this course and all, those we'll discuss in the end of the session. Yeah. Fine. So, so here, I'll, I'll just keep in the mind, we have participants who are from the EBS background and the few participants not from the EBS background. I'll try to just just to consider those two classification of the participants accordingly. We'll run the classes. So, if whatever we are going to discuss, if you have to discuss something which is related to EBS to compare, yes, I'll include that. Otherwise, as a very uh, general way, just we'll talk about specific concept and we'll proceed. Okay, wherever. The comparison comparison is required and applicable. I'll just cover that point. Otherwise, we'll proceed with as a standalone uh, concept which you have to understand. Okay. So when we talk about the uh, fusion applications, if any user need access to the fusion applications, we have to provision the access to user with the concept called as a roles. The concept called as roles, we can give the access to any business users to work on the application. When you talk about roles, the roles concept, we call it as RBAC. Okay. RBAC stands for Role-Based Access Control. Okay. Giving access to the users to work on specific application related functionality or any sort of activity users do 
that we call as our bank role based access control okay by using the role based access control users can have access to the application to do any sort of configuration or it could be related to transaction creation or generating the reports any sort of privileges user can get on the application with the help of roles only so let's talk about what are the different type of roles we have and in the latest version only which roles we have and when you compare the same roles with ebs how those are similar or equal to ebs menus concept let's talk about it. so when we talk about roles basically we have job roles in the fusion application job roles and we have a duty roles and we have the abstract role data roles okay data roles these are the four type of roles we have let's take example of job role so the user is working for payables application when user is going to work for payables application you have to give the payables application related job role to that user say in payables accounts payables what we can do we can create the invoices and we can process the payments primarily these are the two activities which we do in the payables application so by combining this invoice process and payment process you can have a role called as i'm taking just an example accounts payable manager so this is a one of the role name within that role what we have invoice related privileges as well as payment related privileges the accounts payable manager this role as per fusion we call as job role we call as job role within the job role what are the privileges we have invoice related and payment related these two we call as duty roles okay the first one we call as just job role and invoice creation or simply you can say invoice creation invoice creation as well as payment creation primarily we can do this activities in the payables application so we have a role called as accounts payable manager and within that the accounts payable manager can do invoice creation activities and do payment creation activities so what the role can do those we are calling as duty roles this is also duty role so accounts payable manager you can call a job role and within the accounts payable manager what are the privileges we have those you can call as duty role when you say invoice creation user can create invoice the user can edit there are many activities which we do against the invoice everything can be done if you have a invoice creation within the accounts payable manager role that we are calling as a duty roles okay. or i'll say within this invoice creation there are 10 privileges for payment creation there are 10 privileges okay say so within the accounts payables manager role we have total 20 privileges 20 activities this accounts payable manager role can do so those are classified into two parts one is invoice creation and other one is payment creation those classifications only we are calling as a job so now if any user wants to work on accounts payable application say so we have a user called as abc okay abc is a user now user required access to accounts payable application now what we have to do is we have to assign this accounts payable manager role to this abc user within the accounts payable manager role what are the duty roles we have invoice creation and payment creation these duty roles you cannot assign to abc user okay only job role you can assign to the abc user so now when you talk about the accounts payable manager role you are going to assign to abc user for example you are going to assign accounts payable manager role you are going to assign to 
ABC user. So now ABC user can have access to accounts payables manager role. Within the accounts payable manager role, you have the privileges related to invoices and to payments. Yes, this ABC user can create the invoices and payments with the help of this role. But this accounts payables manager role need access to which business unit. Okay. In future applications, whatever we call as operating unit in EBS, okay, we have a concept called as operating unit. Okay, OU. If you are not from EBS background, you don't need to worry about this. We will discuss about the enterprise structure. There you will come to know what is the purpose of operating unit and what based the operating units can be finalized. We'll discuss more detail level. You can understand in that session. Very soon we'll talk about it. Since we are going to compare, I'm taking this point. So in EBS, whatever we are calling as operating in it, the same we are calling in Fusion as a business unit. Okay. Short, you can say BU. So now accounts payable manager is going to create invoice and payments for which business unit we have to specify. That means the business unit we have to associate to the job role. Say business unit. We have to associate the business unit to job role. This is how we have to connect. So ABC user need access to accounts payable manager to perform these transactions, invoice creation, payment creation. When this ABC user is going to create the invoice and payments, that should the invoice and payment should related to specific business unit. That is the reason business unit you have to assign to this accounts payable manager. So this accounts payable manager role we are calling a job role. Within the job role, what are the privileges we have? Those are classified into duty roles. Okay, those are classified into duty roles. So when you assign the job role to the business user, you have to provision the access to business unit so that that user can create the transactions related to invoice and payments for specific business unit. So if you assign, okay. So in the system environment, what Warag did is, if you have a role called as accounts payable manager, if you create the business unit, to create the business unit, the automatically the business unit will be associated with the accounts payable manager. Automatically the business unit will be associated with the accounts payable manager. Okay, the combination of job role, accounts payable manager is job role, okay, and the business unit. The combination of job role plus business unit, this we call as a data role. Or else you take example of general ledger application, any one of the role. I'm taking the role called as general accounting manager. This is one of the role which we use in the GL application. So if you create, if you create primary ledger, if you are not aware of these terms, we will we'll come to know very soon. Primary ledger. With the help of primary ledger only, you can record the transactions in the application. If you create the primary ledger, automatically the primary ledger system will assign to GL related roles. Okay. So this also we call as a data role. So there is a role called a job role, accounts payables manager and general accounting manager, both are roles. Which roles? Job roles. To those roles, we are giving access to business unit. Business unit is a data. Okay, that is the reason we are calling it as a data role. And general accounting manager is the job role. To the job role, we are assigning automatically system would assign the primary ledger. The combination of job role and primary ledger or the combination of job role and business unit, this we call as a data role. So now we are going to work on the latest version called as release 13. Okay, we are going to work on release 13 version. In the older versions, okay, in the older versions up to I think release 10, 
four, seven, eleven also. Up to release eleven, whenever you create your business unit and do primary ledger, automatically the business unit will get assigned to business unit specific roles. And when you create the primary ledger, which roles can be used with the primary ledger? To those roles, the primary ledger will get assigned. Automatically, system would create data roles. This happens up to release eleven. After release eleven, there is no concept called as data roles where system would create. Okay, so this is how we have to assign. You have to create the business unit. That business unit you want to assign to which role you have to assign. But in the older versions, older versions, there is a concept called as data roles. Okay. The data roles concept we don't have in the latest version. Okay. No data role concept in release 13. In the older versions, we have a data roles concept. That's what we have to understand. We are trying to understand what are the different type of roles we have. That is the reason we are addressing about data roles. In the older version up to release 11, what system does is whenever you create the business unit, automatically the business unit will get assigned to BU specific applications like all payables, receivables, purchasing, order management, project costing, project billing. There are different applications which we use at business unit level, which is equal to operating unit in ABS. Automatically, the system would assign the business unit to all the roles which are related to business unit. In the same way, if you create the primary ledger. So the primary ledger will get assigned to all the general ledger application related roles. That's how system creates data roles in the older versions. But in the latest version, we don't have a data roles concept. And when you talk about job roles, yes, for every application, we have a job roles within the job role. What are the classifications you have? Data classification, uh, privileges classification, those we call as data duty roles. We can assign only job roles only to the user. Duty roles you cannot assign to the user. Duty roles you cannot assign. So job roles and duty roles are very specific to application. Okay, the job roles and duty roles can be specific to payables or receivables. That means for each and every application we have a job roles. But when you talk about abstract roles, those are the roles which can be used as a common roles in respect of user, say the user is working for payables department. Yes, we have to assign the abstract role. User is working for receivables department. Yes, we have to assign the abstract role. User is working for purchasing department or purchasing application. User need access to purchasing application. We have to assign the abstract role. The best example for abstract role is employee. Okay, so payables, receivables. Purchasing, order management, take any application. The people will be working for those departments accordingly will give that respect to application access. So all the people will be acting as a employees in the organization. The employee role we call as abstract role. Okay, the role which is which can be used commonly for any user, that role we call as abstract role. The other example you can take as a buyer also. Okay. By year and other roles also, but not required. You can take this example. So employee role we call as abstract role, but primarily how to understand these are the two role types which we use across the application. Okay, these data roles anyway we don't have in the latest version. The older versions they given this logic, and they stopped the logic of creating the data roles automatically. The reason is. When we create the business unit at primary ledger, automatically system is assigning the BUs and the primary ledger to respective roles. But between that data connectivity between the business units and the primary ledger and the roles, the connectivity is missing. There are many issues addressed with this mapping. That is the reason Oracle completely stopped that approach. And now only the option is you have to assign the business unit to specific role in the same way you have to assign the primary ledger to specific role. Finally, that need to be associated with the business user. This is how you have to connect the data objects like business units and primary ledger to the roles. Only job roles can be assigned to the users. Duty roles you cannot assign to the user. And these are the type of roles we have. Job roles, duty roles, abstract roles, job data roles. Data roles no more in the latest versions. 
So the primary roles are job and duty only. Abstract role, just simple point which you have to understand. This is the role which is a common. Mostly HCM roles we call as abstract role. When you talk about HCM, so all related to employees. Okay. So employee related roles primarily we call as which role is refers employee related employee related information. Those roles you can call as abstract role. So we'll see when you are working in the application, which other roles we call as abstract role, why we call, but very simple point to understand is which role can be associated with the, all the users irrespective of application, those roles we call as abstract role. Okay. The primary roles are these two only, job and duty roles. To understand what, how many type of roles we have, this is a point you have to make a note. Job role, duty role, abstract role, data roles. So, so these are the points we have to understand related to roles and Oracle is providing the seeded roles. Seeded roles means along with the product we get the roles which we can call as Oracle delivered roles. For every application Oracle is providing the seeded roles. When we are working on the application we will see for which application which roles Oracle is providing will go through and as a part of our classes we will see how to create the custom roles. When you do the implementation for the client as per the business requirement, we have to create the custom roles. We have to create the custom job roles, custom duty roles, require custom abstract roles we have to create. Anyway, we don't have a data roles concept. So these custom roles also we have to create that also we'll discuss in our classes. We'll see how to create the custom job duty and do abstract roles. We'll do everything from the scratch in terms of custom roles creation also. So these are the points you have to understand. Okay, any questions here, please? If no questions, we'll just compare the same concept with the EBS. How this is different from EBS? Okay, security. Any questions here, please? Uh, hey, Lakshman, I have yeah. one question over here. Please. So as you mentioned that uh, data rules are no more into R13 version. So is it being replaced by data access set? No. Data access set related to GL application that is there in EBS also. Okay, that is the GL specific fun functionality. Okay, no. So, so see, see for example, uh, uh, there are certain menus. Say, like, like for example, you said that account payable, payable manager is a role. Correct. So inside that role, I can see many duties like invoice creation, payment creation. Then there is. Uh, many, many report, I take uh, right? two examples. Yes, you can have a yes. many duty roles inside of the one job. Yes. Yes. So, uh, like this question may be little advanced, but the thing is that when I created a custom role by copying the seeded role, and I wanted to remove this uh, aging report access from account payable manager role, which was copied and made a custom, but I was not able to do that. So. How you can, can we do, do that? that? You can do that. I can understand you tried and you are asking this question. Yeah. Yeah. Because you submitted. Okay. If you discuss about this, it would be like discussion you and me only. I'll, I'll explain that. Why you are not able to do, I'll tell you in the end of the session. You can spend some time if you have questions. Or, because that is a. Okay. Sure. That's a, See, the roles, there will be two points. The code is matter. If the code is role code is starting with ORA, that Oracle won't allow you to modify. Okay, we'll, we'll talk on that. We'll talk on that. Yeah. We'll talk on that. Anyway, we'll be working on that custom roles. There, I'll show you how to manage those. Copy. Uh, 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 so do we have? Uh, hello. Yeah. Any other questions, please? Lachman, do do we have this custom role access in SAS also? Because SAS any, is environment, like any environment. See, the roles, it's all about we are not creating the new functionality in the application. Whatever the functionality Oracle built, okay, that we are going to use. We are trying to manage which user required access to which functionality. That's it. In any environment, okay. you can create the custom roles. It could be SAS or PaaS. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions here, please? Uh, Lakshman, sorry, one more question. Please. Like here we are going uh, topic by topic. So will there be any like uh, specific project related thing? Like when you go to the actual project, like uh, at that time you have certain roles and responsibility and you start with uh, getting the user requirement and then you uh, uh, 
do the data load and then you go forward so do we have any sort of uh, those practice things in place or what yeah we will see in the system how when you start with the implementation so what is the first step next second step third step what sequence we have to follow the same will do it so before we start with the system the basic few things need, we have to understand that is the reason we are talking about it once we are clear about it we'll we'll start with the system the same you could say yeah. okay thank you yeah thanks any questions here to understand about the roles here okay just this is like introduction only don't take we have we discussed and finished no just introduction once we get into the system it will be more clear for us so job roles what are the names how it works and duty roles and how to create the custom roles and all just i'm trying to introduce the type of roles that's all any questions here please yeah, Lashman, by using the abstract roles, yeah, can able to create the invoice and make a make a payment. No, no, abstract roles not for specific application. That's what we discussed. The job roles and duty roles for specific application. You can have a separate job roles and duty roles for payables. Separate job roles and duty roles for receivables. But abstract roles mostly related to employee associated. Okay. So abstract role means see, when, you, when you assign the abstract role to any user, that user will get access to the pay slips, okay, and time card, and very, very basic information which is required for every employee. Those that sort of privileges the user can get if you give the access to employee role called as abstract. Role name is employee. Okay, role name is employee. That we call as abstract role. So can we say like you know in the Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. So we don't need access, right? Raj, please go ahead. Yeah, it's only read only access, right? No, no, no. Read only you you can set it. You can set it like how you require access accordingly. You can set any role like the privileges and all. You can uh, customize. Certain privilege, certain data you need read only or read and write privileges. By default, you could see read and write. Or you can create custom one by setting the privilege as a read only also. Um, so uh, my question was uh, abstract roles. Can we say that you know if like a vendor master data, uh, a certain employees can only see the bank data for vendor, right? Or uh, Certain sensitive data which we don't want to show to all users can that be considered as abstract role? No, no, no. It's, it's abstract means not like to set the variety of permissions. Abstract role means the role which can be used irrespective of application specific users. That is the meaning of it. When you talk about employee, employee is abstract role. That employee role is required for every user who are working on the system. That is the meaning of abstract role. If you assign the abstract role to any user, they'll get access to their employee self-service access. Okay. Okay. So basically, you are saying uh, abstract roles are specific to employee, and uh, job roles and duty roles are specific to the job. Application. Application. I mean, yeah. In like in R12, it can be responsibility, and duty roles can be like a submenu, right? We'll talk about it. The comparison we are going to see now. Let's try to understand as standalone. Okay. So, job and duty roles are application specific. Abstract roles are not specific to application. For any user, you can assign so that accordingly the privileges will be given to that users. That's all. Yeah. Any questions here, please? So no questions. So let's compare the same with EBS. So in EBS, please go and mute uh, since somebody is unmuted and some noise. Okay. So in EBS, we have a concept called as menu. So you can call as main menu and sub menu. Within sub menu, we can find the functions. Okay. We have a menu concept and main menu and sub menu. So by default, Oracle provides 
serial menus within the serial menus you can see functions also so within the so within the serial menu you can have a sub menus within the sub menus you can have a functions okay so if you are going to assign if you are going to create the responsibility in ebs if you are going to create the responsibility you have to select the menu and you can create the responsibility directly you cannot select the sub menu if you want to use any sub menu in the responsibility you have to create menu against the sub menu then only you can select the sub menu into responsibility the same point we discussed here also you can assign only job role to the user you cannot assign the duty roles to the user if you want to assign any duty roles to the user against the duty role we have to create the job role that you can assign to specific user fine now equal to menus okay so equal to menus we have a job roles in the fusion applications okay job role equal to menu in fusion we have a job role equal to sub menu we have a duty role in fusion application equal to functions within the duty role you will have a privileges certain access related permissions so that we call as privilege okay privileges so ebs menu is equal to fusion job role ebs sub menu is equal to fusion duty role ebs functions equal to privileges okay this is how you can have primarily this is what you have to consider these are the inside of the sub sub menu so you can have a functions inside of the duty role you can have a privileges by grouping the privileges you can have a duties duty roles by grouping the duty roles you can have a job role. the same way by grouping the functions you can have a sub menu by grouping the sub menus you can have a menu so this is all we have in ebs you can create on top of the menu you can you have to create the responsibility say for example you have to create responsibility called as ap responsibility that you can assign to the user Okay, the AP responsibility you can assign to the user who need access to AP application. So without creating the AP responsibility, you cannot assign this menu to that user. You cannot assign the menu to the user directly. But in the fusion applications, okay, equal to menu we have a job role here. But in the fusion, you can assign the job role directly to user. But in the EBS, the menu you cannot assign to the user to give the access to this menu for the user. So you have to create intermediate definition called as responsibility. So in EBS, within the responsibility, we include the menu and the request group also. Okay, request group for the reports and the programs. But in the fusion job role consists of okay duty role. within the duty role you will have a privileges and reports also in fusion there is no separate concept called as request group okay there is no separate concept called as request group so you have to understand the job role consists of everything in ebs when you create the responsibility within that you can find the menu and along with the menu you can attach the reports access also to the user with the concept called as request group but in the fusion there is no request group what are the privileges you required what are the reports you required everything you can include within the job role with the help of duty role or without duty role also directly you can include the privileges into job role this all points will see in the system just since we are going to start with the user and roles we are trying to understand these points any questions here please okay somebody is not from the ebs background you no need to worry about it about this session just try to take the names only you no need to understand what exactly we are discussing once you get into the application so you you can get to know how things can be managed okay just take the naming convention as introduction from this session if you are not from ebs background that's all any questions here please
And what is request group? Can you please explain again? You know the request group, right? Uh, that, uh, that concept, I didn't get it properly. No, do you know request group? Uh, no. No. If you don't know, see, that's what I'm telling. That is only for EBS guys. You ignore it. It won't become issue for you to understand the future. How the, the similar thing can be handled here, we'll see. In EBS, what happens okay. is there is a concept called as request, request group. Within this, you can group the reports. User required access to 10 reports. Okay. When you create the responsibility, you assign this request group to responsibility. You assign this menu to responsibility. Now, when you assign this responsibility to this user, this user can have access to these 10 reports with the help of request group. With this help of this menu, within the menu, what are the sub menus functions we have? This user can access. But in the Fusion application, there is no separate concept. Everything you can include within the job role only, or you can include within the duty role. That's how you can give the access. There is no similar concept in Fusion as a request group. That is the point we are trying to understand. Yeah, we got it. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. But that is not required for us. If you are not from EBS, yeah, guys, yeah. Yeah, I know, no, I, got it. I got it. Just since we are discussing you <laughs> <laughs> connecting. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's quite the, exactly, the, exactly. Under the responsibilities, we can add uh, multiple uh, menus. Like this is one to many relationship. No. So, uh, one, one, second. Job, one second. One responsibility can have access to one menu only. Within one responsibility, you can include only one menu. Okay. Okay. One menu only you can have. That's it. That menu consists of and consists of multiple sub menus or else within one menu you can have many other menus -menu. that you can have. any questions here please fine hello yeah please uh, what is the ebs background i don't know exactly what is the ebs background oh, that is separate to see now we are talking about oracle fusion applications Right. Okay. Fusion applications. This course related okay. fusion applications, especially financials. So oh, yes, that, that's there is a older version, previous version from Oracle that is Oracle EBS Arthur. Okay, okay, okay. Prior to that, we have EBS, Oracle EBS 11A. Eleven A applications from Oracle. Okay. When I, it's a no more Oracle is not supporting. So the many clients are already using the EBS. Now as the latest okay. applications, Oracle introduced Fusion applications, yes back. Okay, okay. Thank if you. somebody from this, this, any one of these backgrounds, I'm just giving some notes for them to compare, that's it. If you're not from EBS 11A R12 applications background, you can ignore those points. Just you try to tune those. So okay. when you are working on the application, it would be more clear for you, even if you don't understand that relevant points, which I'm comparing with EBS. No need to worry about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and also one more thing is I don't have any background related to Oracle. Okay. Yeah, still you can understand this. Uh, yes, I can understand. Actually, my background is SAP, end user. Oh, okay, okay. Fine. But I want to learn uh, Oracle only, so that uh, I don't have any Oracle background. Okay, yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 I'll just okay. cover everything from the scratch so you can have a better understanding about this product. Okay, okay sure. Yeah. sure. Thanks. Any other questions here, please? It's a simple point here. If you want to allow any business user or any user to work on the application, what we have to do is we have to give the access to the roles. When you talk about roles, this is how roles are classified. In the latest version, there is no data roles concept. When you talk about other roles, these are the three roles which you have to consider, job roles, duty roles. So primarily job roles only will give to that user what are the different job roles we have, how to assign, if you assign so and so role, what access user will get. That everything will see more detail level as a part of application. As an introduction, just I'm bringing these names, okay, for our discussion. Okay, if you compare with EBS, this is how, these are similar. 
the job roles what we have those are equal to EBS menus and duty roles are equal to EBS sub menus and inside of this invoice creation there could be 10 activities which you could do those are we call those we call as privileges as per EBS those we call as functions okay so those we call as functions here you can call as privilege or in other words you can call as a task also that we'll see once we get to the application any questions here please any questions please okay. no questions now we'll, let's talk about user when you get access to fresh instance say you are working for one client so when you are working for one client you'll get the fresh instance from the oracle by default in case of oracle fusion cloud oracle fusion cloud applications okay by default okay we get two instances okay so instance two instances we get instance is instance means the environment where you can find this product okay two instances we can get so as per fusion cloud the instances we call as a pod 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 like ipod okay we get by default two pods only two instances we get from oracle for any client one you can use for testing other one you can use for production if you need more than these two you have to pay extra so that is the landscape of the instances or pods in case of cloud applications okay in case of ebs we can ask our DBA to arrange n number of instances, how many we require, since everything is going to be managed by our client only. Servers, and DBS, everything. The client will be client will have their own setup so that we can request. But in case of fusion applications, by default, we get access to two pods, POD pod. Okay. In fusion, we don't call it as instance, we are calling as pod. Still, you can continue with that name, nothing wrong. But ideally, the naming is pod we call so by default we'll get two pods one is test and two, other one is production okay this is a point we have to understand once you get access to any instance from oracle they'll provide they'll create one user and they'll provide okay there is no default user and password earlier in the older versions they are giving but now in the latest version they completely stop providing the default user and password now for every you every client they will just give the separate user creation separate user credentials say you are working as a consultant for finance implementation your client got received instance or pod credentials from oracle so now as a first step what we have to do is you can proceed with that user or else we have to create our own user okay you can create new user we have to create the new user say for example you are creating the new user called as so erp3 you want to create user called as erp3 so after creating this user you should be able to do the implementation that means you require all the privileges you require all the privileges so that you can do all the setups and you can work on all the applications so that sort of full privileges you require the system if you require access to full privileges, we have to assign the two basic roles to this user. Whatever the user you create to work as an implementation consultant, you have to assign the roles called as application implementation consultant and IT security manager. So these two roles we have to assign to any user. Okay, these are the two roles which we have to assign to the user. What is the use of application implementation consultant? With the help of this application implementation consultant, you can do the setups. Okay, as per the client requirement or to complete the basic setups for each and every application, you can do the setups. And IT security manager role 
will allow you to create the users and you can manage the roles also okay the application implementation consultant role will allow us to do the setups right as security manager role will allow us to create the new users and you can assign the roles to users or say simply assign roles to roles to users and you can create custom roles also with the help of IT security manager role. Any application related setups you can do with the help of application implementation consultant. You want to do payable setups? Yes, you need application implementation consultant. Receivables, general ledger, cash management, fixed assets, or P2P related or O2P related, O2C related, any, any setups you can do with the help of application implementation consultant. If you are going to work as the implementation consultant, if you are going to implement it could be finance applications or SCM application or HCM applications or PPM project portfolio management okay any applications you are going to implement as a consultant for any client you require these two basic roles okay these two are seated roles only Oracle is providing these two also we call as job roles these two job roles we have to assign to the user so that we'll be able to do the implementation by doing all the setups even we can test the transaction flow also for that we have a additional setups okay with the help of these two roles you can do the application related setups and you can do all these activities with the help of it security manager and if you are going to work on the payables application we have a payable separate roles for receivables we have a separate role for users point of view business user point of view for each and every application we have a different roles but consultant point of view, these are the two roles which we require. Okay. So this is the point we have to understand. Any questions here, please? Okay. If you assign application implementation consultant role to any user, that user will be able to do the setups. If you assign application, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, I was actually talking on mute. So I have one question regarding that uh, uh, pod. Maybe I'm going a little back. Please. So uh, uh, in like you know test and production, you have you're calling like a pod, right? Like we call instances. Correct. Um, yes. So Oracle currently provides like you know demo vision uh, instances and everything. Do we get to uh, uh, get access to any uh, Oracle Fusion Cloud uh, vision instance? No. no. You know after this. Uh, training if you want to continue the practice and everything yeah yeah for practice purpose you will get the vision instance test instance for our practice yes you will get it yeah but that will be from erp tree right uh, what i'm saying is you know can we directly uh, request to oracle to get the student copy or student access or something no you cannot get it you cannot get it only for the implementation partners they will provide the instance the only implementation partner. Okay, yeah. thank you. Correct. That too, they have to pay for Oracle. Okay, the implementation partner only can get. For that, they will charge from the partner. Okay, thanks. Okay. So, if you are going to work as a consultant for any project, you require access to two roles. First, you have to create the user and you have to assign these two roles to that user. So the first role application implementation consultant with the help of this role you can do the setups to do the setups this role will give you the access to fsm fsm so with the help of application implementation consultant role you can connect to fsm with the help of fsm only you can do all these setups what does it mean by fsm fsm stands for functional setup manager Okay. The application implementation consultant role will allow us to connect to FSM, Functional Setup Manager. With the help of FSM, you can do the setups. If you assign IT Security Manager role to this user, that user will allow you to access Security Console. Okay, this IT Security Manager role will give you the access to Security Console. With the help of security console only you can create the new users and you can assign the roles 
to the users and you can create the custom roles. Okay. So it, with the help of the security console only, you can create users and you can assign the roles to users and you can create the custom roles. Now, the simple point is application implementation consultant will allow us to connect FSM so that you can do the setups. IT security manager role will allow us to connect to security console so that we can do all these activities. This is the point we have to understand. Any questions here, please? No questions. Okay, this is the cloud instance. Okay, so you can just connect from any device which is connected with internet. No plugins are required, no prerequisites required from any machine. Okay, directly you can connect. You can connect from your smartphone also. By using this URL, you can connect to this instance and you can log in and you can do certain activities from the smartphone also. No Java or other plugins are required to connect this. Now we'll log into this instance and we'll see how to create the user. Now the simple target is user creation, how to create the user and many other relevant points going forward we'll discuss as a part of different sessions. So I'm going to log into this instance with one of the existing user. When it comes to your practice, we will share you one user. With that user, you can log into the instance and you can create your own user. Your own user, you can do the required setup what we are going to see in our classes. Right? Here I'm going to use one user called as FA student. So connect to instance. Now, what is our target? We want to create the user and we want to assign these two roles. We'll see the same. So we'll we'll come to know all the points here. Whatever you could see, okay. Here and all. Uh, now it's not required to understand. Going forward, we will touch base all those points. So now the target is user creation. To create the user, once you get access to the instance with the specific user, log into the instance. Here, left side on the corner, you can see the lines. The bars you can see, click on those bars icon. Click on that, it will open the navigator. Okay. So it will allow us to navigate to, to perform certain activity. So just click on the user. The same you can do when you get the login credentials from us for your practice purpose. Log into the instance with the given user credentials and click on the navigator icon, which, which you could see in the bars. So here, within this navigator, you can find the tools section. Tools we have. Under tools, you can find the security console. Okay. Any user can get access to security console if the user got access to IT security manager role. That's what we discussed, right? If you assign IT security manager role to any user, that user can have access to security console. Now, the current user, from the current user, we are able to see security console. That means to this user already, IT security manager role is assigned. That's what we have to understand. So to create the new user, click on the navigator, go to tool section under tools, you can find the task called as security console. Click on security console. Okay, go to tool section. In some instances, some instances, if you click on the navigator, this you could find as a collapsed mode. In that case, you can, here there will be option called as expand. You can click on expand or else this all will be collapsed mode. So you can go and expand the tools, then you can find the task called as security console. Okay, click on security console. So this security console, they built against IDM application, IDM, or you can call as OIM. So IDM stands for Identity Manager. Identity Manager. ID stands for Identity, M stands for Manager. OIM stands for Oracle Identity Manager. 
In the older versions, Oracle is giving the access to this IDM application or call as OM. Both are same. So in the older versions, okay, up to release 10, okay, Oracle was giving the access to IDM. Directly you can access to the IDM. From IDM only you can create the users and you can assign the roles, you can create the custom roles. From release 11 onwards, Oracle stopped giving access to IDM. Because in IDM level there will be a lot of sensitive data which people may disturb. That is the reason Oracle even they got the experience where things started got disturbing by the consultants or someone else from the client side. That is the reason they stop giving the IDM access. If they stop giving the IDM access, then how we can create the users, we can assign the roles to users and we can create the custom roles. So we cannot create all those if no IDM access. That is the reason what Oracle did is against the IDM, they created security console. They created framework called as security console. Whatever you can do directly from IDM that they are provisioning through security console. So this is the point you have to understand. Okay. In the latest versions, there is no IDM access Oracle is giving. The older versions directly they give an IDM access. So in IDM only you can create the users and you can create assign the roles to users and the custom roles creation also possible in IDM only. Okay, or OAM, Oracle Entity Manager. From the release 11 onwards, they stopped giving access to IDM. Whatever you could do in the IDM that they are allowing us to do from the security console. When we are doing all this activity in the security console, everything will get connected with the IDM only. Okay. The back end you could see IDM only. With the help of IDM only, you'll be able to create users, assignments, custom roles in the security console. That's all. So this is a point we have to notice. The latest version also we have IDM, but no direct access. So whatever you can do from the IDM that now Oracle is allowing to do from security console. Fine. Now we are in this page. Go select the users. Select the users option. Click on add user account. Okay, just click on add user account. So now the user which we are going to create that we call as implementation user. Okay. So these two roles are required ideally for implementation consultant only. The user which you are creating, the user we call as implementation user. We have other user types also. Once we complete required setups, we will discuss about that user type, how the user, we have a difference between implementation user and other users. But now we have to understand how to create the user. So here you can give the the last name. The first name is not mandatory. Provide last name, say yeah, 50. And email ID is optional. And username is same, system is defaulting. And you can provide the password and you can confirm the same. We'll set the password and we'll confirm the same after assigning the roles. Which roles we want to assign? Application implementation consultant and IT security manager. These two roles are enough. We'll get a full privileges to instance or say pod. We're going to assign the roles. To assign the roles to this user, click on add role. Which role we have to assign? Application implementation consultant. When you type application implementation, here you can see the few other roles also. Application implementation administrator. Okay. The same application implementation administrator role you can see twice. But if you notice, there is a code. This is starting with ASM, Application Implementation Administrator, Abstract, and Application Implementation Administrator, ORA. You can notice here this role type is abstract. Irrespective of which application you are going to implement, this role is required. That is the reason this role is classified into abstract. Other role we discussed, employee also. Okay, this is one of the role. The role is Application Implementation Consultants. The same role, we have a two copies, but code is different. Code is different. The same role somebody copied. We can copy the roles. So application implementation administrator copy. Somebody copied. The other role is application implementation consultant. The same role, application implementation consultant. We have a two copies, but one is starting with ASM, other one is starting with ORA. Okay, that also somebody copied. We have other role called as application implementation manager. 
here also two copies are there okay two definitions are available the role codes are different one is starting with ore other one is starting with as so this is how you can see many relevant roles but which role we have to assign application implementation consultant role the consultant role will have a full privileges when you compare with administrator and manager don't assign administrator or manager roles to user always assign application implementation consultant role only okay we have application implementation consultant role you can assign any one of the role in the first two roles the role can start with asm or or it doesn't matter but when you talk about role customization we have to understand what is the difference between the role codes if it is starting with or and without or that point will discuss at the time of customization for now any role you can assign the both roles will have a same privileges okay so how to search for application implementation consultant and select any one of the role never select the role if you see in the instance as a something as a prefix or suffix as a copy or something else role name should be exactly application implementation consultant both are same first two but codes are different one is starting with asm other one is starting with ora but these two roles codes are different names are same but privileges are same all privileges inside same you could see in the two roles i am selecting the first role select again is this role somebody created copy also ignore it don't touch that click on the role name click on add role membership so that this role system will assign to our user click on add role membership so this is how we have to assign the role to the user click on that one role we assign to this user in the same way you can assign one more role click on add role or else without closing this you can search for another role here and you can assign other role is it security manager so role is it security manager you can see two definitions with the same name but codes are different fnd it security manager here ore fnd it security manager and somebody created cop somebody copied the rules and they mentioned do not use that means they did some changes in that so they just given the note do not use so which role we have to use any one of the role you can use the first one or second one both are same both will have a same privileges but what is the difference between these two we will understand at the time of roles customization for now nowhere it will impact so we no need to understand now i am selecting the first role select the same click on add role membership nothing but assign the role to user so this is how you can assign the roles to the users click on done and what is assignable what is auto provisioning roles that is a separate concept we will discuss now set the password for this user and here simple password policy you could see place the cursor it's a very simple uh, policy at least eight characters one number okay the password policy we can set how we require that also we can set we will see the, those points also as a part of this administration like when we deal with the role customizations when you copy those so there we will be covering all those points at that time we will see how to set the policies for now let's follow whatever we have in this instance so set so we are giving the last name since that is a mandatory and the username and we assign the two roles to the user and we are setting the providing the password when we are confirming the password if you want to set the first name and uh, email address yes you can provide now click on save and close our user will be ready in this instance let's click on save and close now you can find the same user from here we already select we are in the page by selecting the users search for our user erp3 click on search this is a user record display name is nothing but last name whatever we given and the user this is the user name we given we didn't provide any email id and the user status the record status is active the account is not locked locked no here we have actions click on actions if you want to lock this the account yes you can lock it so that this user cannot log into the instance and if you want to delete the user also yes that is a possible they given that option ideally we never delete the users 
they given the user uh, they given the privilege to delete the users so where it is applicable in the test instances and other other instances to avoid the duplication you may delete it and uh, other option is reset password if you want to change the password for this user you can click on reset password and you can change the password okay so you can reset the password so this is how you can just manage the user record so any questions here please um, so when you create a user where do you assign employee to user how the association with that's employee different. a person record that that's different when you create the user this user we are calling as implementation user if you want to associate the user employee to the user we required business unit legal entity primary ledger those definition then only you can assign we have to complete all those setups then you will be able to do that assignment directly you cannot do yeah okay yeah. when you so implementation is just for creating the setups and uh, um, uh, application uh, configuration yeah this user you can use to okay. keep setups ready once setups are ready even your business unit primary ledger legal entities all will be ready so that you will be able to associate this user with employee okay. thank you yeah thanks any questions here please uh, uh, no no if you see like normally for the fusion we buy subscription no we buy 10 Correct. or 20 subscription, subscription. Correct. Now, after we maybe we say just we bought ten subscriptions, then we assign all ten. Then thereafter we deleted two uh, uh, IDs. Now, when we delete two IDs, it will count it as eight users or 10, no, no, no. ten users. No, you taken the license or you taken the subscription for ten users. You may use, may not use. You'll have a privileges yeah. to use up to ten because these instances will be under Oracle control. They can audit. They can do the audit any time. If you are not using Oracle is not going to count accordingly. Taking the license, no, there will be due. Yeah, no, it, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, it's in my point. Like we say, like uh, no, we bought 10 subscriptions and we have 10 employees. Four okay. people resigned. And then we did, deleted four, then we added the four more. So they will count, Oracle will count as a 14 or 10. They'll consider only active users. Active users, ah, okay. So, so, so basically, when they do the audit, they will see any given moment the active users. Yes. Sir. So, yes, active sir. users are below the uh, whatever subscription we bought, so there won't be any issues. Correct, correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Any other questions here, please? Fine, no questions. Now, we'll sign out from the oh. user and we'll log into the instance as ERP tree user. Yeah, please. Last one. Okay, one question. Please. Uh, uh, create user account is uh, how many we can create? Create user. Uh, how many accounts you can create? N number of. N number of. Uh, for example, what is the reason for create the account? We are going to practice or? Uh, yes, sir. Going to... We are going to practice. We are going to learn. You have to see how to do the setups and all. Okay. Okay, number of IDs we can create. Because whatever you are going to create, that you have to. You have to give the access to your user only, right? Whatever you are okay. going to do, the, whatever the setups you are going to do in the system, that need to be accessed by which user, your user. For that reason, you have to okay. have your own user. So even at the yeah. implementation also, at least you require one user to complete all the setups. Once everything is ready, client is going to use that system. How many business users they have as per their business, all those we have to create for which user what, Information is required as access that we have to set up. Okay. Fine. Okay. To have uh, access to the instance and to work on this instance, to do the setups and to test, uh, to do all these activities, we, we created a user. Yeah, please go ahead. Hi. Uh, is this the screen where we import um, uh, several users at the same time? Or I'll, I'll show you that. That is separate, not from here. Okay. That is separate activity. If you want to understand, I'll, I'll take you through that. For that, we have sure, to thank you. install one plugin also, and we have to discuss about that is spreadsheet functionality. When when we when we are working on the relevant uh, topic, I'll I'll cover that. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Fine. Okay, done. So now we'll sign out from this user and we'll log into this instance with our own user, which we created just now. That is the ERP tree user. So confirm the sign out. Log into the instance as a ERP tree user. And one more point here. So we created a user and we assign these two roles to this user. And when you create a user and assign the roles to any user, Oracle is recommending to run one job. Run LDAP job. Okay. So LDAP, LDAP, this is a job name. LDAP stands for L stands for lightweight, B stands for directory, A stands for access, B stands for protocol. Lightweight directory access protocol. When you assign any roles to user, Oracle is recommending to run this job so that the assignments will get synchronized in the directory LDAP directory services. Okay. Even if you don't run also, automatically system can perform the auto synchronization. Okay. Auto synchronization, that's how Oracle has a mechanism of updating all these assignments. But if you don't run this, sometimes it may take more time to update. That is the reason Oracle strongly recommends run this job when you assign the roles to user. We'll go and run the LDAP job from the same user. So from this user, we created one user called as ERP tree. After creating the user, we have to run the job called as LDAP. From where to run? Click on navigator. Once you click on the navigator, within the navigator, you can find the tools section. Within the tools, you can find one task called as scheduled processes. Click on scheduled processes. If you are from EBS background, this, is, this space is equal to SRS window. In EBS from SRS window, you can run the reports and the programs. The same we can do in the Fusion from this page. Okay, this page in Fusion we call as ESS job page. ESS stands for Enterprise Scheduler Service. Okay. ES job page, enterprise scheduler service. In case of EBS, we call as SRS window, okay, standard request submission window. This we call as ESS job page, enterprise scheduler service, from where you can submit any jobs. EBS, whatever we are calling as a request, that here we call a job. To submit the LDAP job, click on schedule new process. Here we have a job and job set. We are going to submit the job. In EBS job, we call as a request. So search for LDAP, LDAP, type LDAP, use tab. It will fetch the job name. So this is job we have to submit. Retrieve latest LDAP changes, say okay. What this job will do, it will synchronize users, roles and role grants with the definition of LDAP. Okay, in Fusion application, we have LDAP, LDAP directory services. If any new user is created, that information need to be updated in the directory services. To that user, if any roles are assigned, that information also system has to update in the directory services. As per the directory services updates only, user can have access to the application. You created one user, we assign the roles to user, but those are not updated in the LDAP directory services. If the user will connect to the instance, as per the roles which you assign, the user cannot have access. So whatever you assign to the user, those need to be updated in the directory services. For that reason, we have to submit this job so that everything will get updated so that user can have access to what roles can be provisioned. So in future applications, whatever you run, that could be report or any job or any process, you can find the description. Even if you run the report also, what is the purpose of the report? You can see the description. So click on OK. Click on submit. Say OK. Click on refresh to see the status. 
So already one more job also triggered. At a time you can run only one job. That is the reason the second job got blocked. Okay, someone else also submitted job in this instance. That is the reason one LDAP job is blocked. The one is running. So the job is CL SQL processor. Sorry. The job is actually you ran that job right. With Correct. the latest end up changes. So yeah. the job is PLC to procedure. Uh, what type of procedure it has? Procedure. See, no. uh, they'll they'll do some kind of uh, SQL PLC SQL programming, which will do that activity of synchronizing the, which will move this data from the user IDM to LDAP directory services. Okay. That is purely programming. That that is some job which they bring the logic into the job. Accordingly, the targeted activities is, uh, the job will take. The uh, job will trigger. Hey, uh, Lakshman, how do we know which user has run which job? Because there are three jobs right now here. Yeah, here you can see. Go to view, select columns, and click on show all. All columns it will display. Here, somebody using the same user, they also submitted. By default, you cannot see other user jobs. Okay. So these also submitted okay. by same user, FA student, because the user which I am using that I given for the few guys for practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So other user jobs you cannot see directly here. Whatever the current user is doing, that jobs only you can find. Okay. Yeah. If we log in as the admin, can we see other user jobs also, right? No, 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 no. You cannot. Now the current user like admin log admin access only. You have IT security manager access means you have admin access only. If you want to see other user related jobs, you have to create the custom job. With the help of custom job, you can see other user related jobs which are submitted by so and so user. That is possible. But there is no seeded role which Oracle is providing to see other user related jobs which they submitted. No, what, what what if we need to look uh, look for uh, other uh, other process ID? I mean, stand by other person. You have because... to create the custom job. You have to create the custom job to see other user related jobs. Okay. When you do the role customization, I'll cover that point also. Or else you can just remind me. Okay, I'll just show you that that is a simple point. Okay, there will be additional privilege which you have to include into the custom job. That's all. Yep. So this is running. So once you submit, you may wait for two minutes. Even the job status is not succeeded, you don't need to worry about it. Within max two minutes, everything will get synchronized. So submit and wait for one or two minutes. Then say sign out, log into the new user, whatever you created. Okay, we'll wind up in five minutes. Yeah. Provide password. Sign. Now we are able to log into the instance with the user college here quickly. So what points we discussed? Because of application implementation consultant, we can access to FSM to perform the setups. We'll go and verify this ERP tree user got access to FSM or not. To verify this user got access to FSM or not, click on the username. Click on username or next to user, there is arrow mark. You can click on that drop down option. Just click on username, it will open the panel. Within the panel, you could see setup and maintenance. If you can see setup and maintenance, but from this user, you can understand this user got access to FSM. Anyway, click on this setup and maintenance. So this is a page from where you can do the setups. Say if you want to do the finance related setups, here you can select financials. 
which application related setups you want to do. So you want to do the setup related to general ledger. Select general ledger and here you can see all the relevant setups. You want to implement receivables application. Select receivables. Here select all tasks. These are the setups which you have to do from receivables. The same way for different applications, we want to implement cache management application, select cache management and select all tasks. You can do from here, all the setups you can do. So this user got access to FSF. That is the reason we are able to see all these information, which allows us to do those particular application related setups. Okay, if you want to do finance setups, you have to select finance. If you want to do the procurement related setups, yes, you can select procurement. Okay. As a part of procurement, you can have a different applications purchasing, self service procurement, sub procurement contracts, I supplier, different applications is all you can do from here. So, this is how you can verify specific user got access to FSM or not. How to check? You have to click on the username within the display panel. You can find the task called as setup and maintenance. Once you click on setup and maintenance, we will land in the FSM page functional setup manager page from here only you can do all the setups from this page only you can create the project also if you click on this notepad kind of icon this we call as task list or task panel if you click on this it will show us the task called as manage implementation projects you can create the project and you can do the setups without project also you can do the setups what is the difference at all we'll discuss when we really create the project okay so we verified because of application implementation consultant, we are able to access FSM. There, from there, you can do the setups. And we'll check IT security manager role be assigned. This user got access to security console or not. You know how to verify the security console access, right? You have to click on the navigator. Within the navigator under tools, if you can see security console as a task, in future, everything we call as a task. Okay, so security console is one of the tasks within the navigator under tools. If you are able to see security console within the navigator under tools, that means we have to understand this user got access to IT security manager role. If you don't assign IT security manager role to this user under tools, you don't find security console. That's all. So you can click on the security console. It will take us to the page even you can go to users you can find out the same user which you created we are accessing from the same user but still you can access, find the same user record if you want to create the new user yes you can create so this is how we can create the new user when you get access to fresh instance from Oracle or from your client the very first activity is you can create your own user before you start with any setups okay any questions on this point, please? No questions. So setups are just like a wizard, right? Yeah, uh, in um, Fusion. Sorry. So the, the so setups is like a wizard, right? Uh, you just go through the certain steps, uh, and then it will tell you the dependence and everything by itself. Exactly, exactly. The setup will be the sequence also. Okay. There will be hierarchy also. The tree hierarchy can be maintained. We'll see that when you are doing the setups, you'll come to know that the complete information. Yes, setups are like wizard. Okay. So, uh, like you know, in normally in our tool, we create, we maintain VR100. Somebody will do this manually. Is this the uh, Fusion also provides a documentation where you can download the setup documentation after you complete? See, when you talk about VR100, you are referring to AIM methodology, right? Correct. In EBS also, it's not mandatory. Oracle recommends to follow AIM in case of EBS many years back, but there are many companies who follow their own practice as per their PMO. Right? So, Correct. they can have their own methodology. The future also the same they can implement. Okay, they can have their own methodology when they do the implementation, the documents, what they prepare, they can give their own naming convention or else they can use Oracle unified methodology, OUR. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oracle, so, one thing. Almost AIM is outdated long back, right? 
still up yeah, yeah i mean aim is now yeah, it's, it's kind of irrelevant now but it's outdated oracle released uh, oracle unified methodology long back you can use those templates to prepare any setup data or any business as is plus as is or to be or configuration or anything else or else as per that company practice you can follow the documentation what templates they use as per the the methodology which the your consulting company follows for your clients okay okay so as a part of this configuration one thing uh, fusion makes it easy uh, yes. moving the configuration from one instance to another instance i yes. think they call something like configuration package correct by using the configuration package easily you can move the setups from one to other instance only setups not data setup uh, transactional data if you want to move the uh, transactional data we have to take the oracle cloud dbs support being a functional consultant setups we can move from one to other instance one to other so I mean, you don't have to manually move or use any no, no, no. other tool config snapshot no, snapshot or something it's a simple you can yeah. create the file which will extract all the setups the same file you can load in the targeted instance in that instance the same setup will be available okay yeah thank you fine any other questions here please okay since no questions then yeah. for today yeah Actually, I'm Raj here. Yeah, please. So actually, you told that the the role of the functional consultant. I said, as a PA developer, I could able to done the reports as per requirements. So okay. So what we need to do to the financial, financial? So okay. First point is we have to learn the product. Okay. The product means the financials contains multiple multiple applications. Financials within the financials we have applications like GL, AP, AR. cm fa and other integrated applications you, you have to learn once you are once you are okay with this product once you get into the project what you have to do is you have to take the requirement yeah. requirement of client so how to implement ap to implement ap the then uh, client will have payables department in the payables department whatever they are doing you will take as a requirement so what type of invoices they are processing how they are maintaining the supplier's information how they are processing the payments this is all the details we have to take whether they process advance to the suppliers do they process expense reports for the employees do they process check payments or electronic payments or wire transfers or they process check payments okay they have suppliers in which countries for india suppliers how they make the payment for foreign suppliers how they make the payment how many invoices they create in a day or week or month what is the volume so what are the reports they require currently which reports they are generating in the current system what are the other reports they are expecting or they are expecting the same reports in our oracle fusion payables application also this is all information we take from the client that we call as requirement gathering once we gather the requirement once you complete this training you will come to know what we can do within the payables what we cannot do with that knowledge easily you can understand okay these these are the five reports Business, uh, business is asking yes the five reports are available so five are not available four only available the fifth one you can tell to the technical people to develop it okay the ba developer can develop the report so client is asking for so and so functionality in the payables application once you take that requirement from the client you will come to know whether that functionality is available or not if it is available you will set it up ready so that you can show them how to use it they will use it when they are using if they have some issues you can help them and apart from that there will be requirement of connecting third party applications with the fusion application there will take the help from the sova consultant okay they will help us how to connect third party application the fusion applications and uh, with which applications they are going to connect we, we should keep in touch with the technical consultant also to provide some functional inputs if anything is required for mapping which field legacy which uh, third party field need need to be mapped with the fusion so on so application related field so we have to sit with the technical team also to discuss on those points before that we have to talk to the client to understand how they are using some third party application what data they are maintaining which data we have to bring from that application to our application so as a part of implementation we do the setups we just we take the requirement we do the setups that means we will provide the solution we will we provide 
training to the business users if required otherwise somebody will take that responsibility and it totally depends whether you are sitting in the client location or offshore if you are sitting in the offshore which is not client location you don't need to give the training you don't need to interact with the client and if you are sitting in the client location you have to interact with the client you have to take the requirement otherwise simply you have to do the setups and you may prepare some documents if required as per your project plan so this is how things can be managed if you are going to work as a consultant in some projects all finance modules one resource has to implement in few projects depending on the size of project for every consultant has to handle separate module in few projects one module can be implemented by multiple consultants also that totally depends the based on the client size based on the client size you may implement all modules alone or else every each module can be allocated to one consultant or else for one module there could be multiple consultants also totally depends one country implementation or multiple countries implementation and the process is easy or complex there are many parameters which will decide all these points okay see if, if you know the product if you understand the product rest of things will become easy that's all Yeah, I got it. So, I have one more question. Please. Yeah, uh, we are having the pages inclusion, right? So, like the uh, tables. Your voice is a little yeah. low. Can you be a bit loud? Yeah, one moment. Am I audible now? Yeah, almost same. No issues. Go ahead. We'll see. Yeah, we are having the. Uh, Pages in the fusion application, right? Like you mentioned, yeah, web pages. Tables, uh, Correct. Yeah, web pages we are having, right? So uh, definitely, these pages is loading the uh, data in the backend tables only, right? Correct. Correct. Every page, every page is connected with the relevant database table. Yeah. So will we get that uh, table information as well? Yeah, yeah. You can access the table information also. I'll, I'll show you in our classes also where you can find all the tables information. We'll work on SQL queries, how to write SQL queries. In that session, I'll show you where you can find all the tables for all applications, AP, AR, GL, CMFA, or any other application. From where you can find the tables, I'll take you through that. No, my question is, for example, if you open that uh, AP, AP page, so uh, you are it. having multiple I got it. In EBS, in EBS, you can do that. In EBS, if you go to some invoice creation page, so that page related, the form related data will get stored in which table they are giving as a who columns. Okay. So, but in the fusion, they are not giving that option. The fusion, if you go to a specific page from page level, there is no information where that page related data will get stored. That option is not there in EBS. That, that option is available. Fusion, no. But you can find all the tables in one separate page. Okay, but but how how can we know whether that that table belongs to that page also? For example, one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. They clearly give that relevant information. They'll give the table name called as AP invoices all. That is the table name. Within the table, what information will get stored? The description also they will provide. Since they are providing that way, you can understand by seeing that. That's all. For every table, they are providing the description. They are clearly mentioning what data gets stored in the table, what are the columns we have in the table, what is the primary key, foreign key, this and that, everything they are specifying. With that information, you can understand. Okay, we don't need to go and analyze this page data where it is getting stored, not required. That detailed information they are giving. Find any other questions, please. Yeah, Lakshman, this is Madhu. I have one question. Please, Madhu. Yeah, yeah. In Excel, we are getting uh, some kind of data which is uh, relevant to the setup data. Just like we are under setup data, we are explore uh, export to the instance in a test environment. The same thing we can use to the production for across all the you know, instances, right? The same Excel data. When you say Excel data, what you are referring? Excel data is, say, for example, we are uh, exploring, uh, export to the some setups data, right? So, for example, if you take your module or AP module, okay. whatever the data, 
set up data we can export uh, export to uh, instance oh, okay okay got you okay, okay you are talking about moving the setup data okay yeah yeah please yeah the same yeah. can use for any instance correct you can like that track the setups you can load in any target instance correct yeah yes at the at the same time can we get the same data in the excel sheet and migrate to the uh, production or any instance you cannot get in the excel sheet excel format that when you extract the data that would be in the xml tagging format okay so automatically the file will but get created that would be in the xml file format so uh, all the data will be with xml tags you cannot export it okay. to whatever the your desired format so if that is the case we cannot move or translate the xml data into the dot xls uh, data right which data whatever the xml tag data is there that file we cannot move to uh, convert into xml uh, sorry xls excel sheet no, you cannot convert no option the file as it is see once you extract the data xml tagging file will get generated that file you have to upload into the target instance so that within that file what are the data we have according to setup system would be that's all you cannot convert into other uh, formats and you cannot extract again from that file as it is you have to use okay so in migration projects what happened if it is migration from one to one third party or oracle or non oracle uh, what kind of excel format we can uh, export the data so oh, for that oracle is providing the fpda templates fpda templates oh through that only we can do it uh, yeah, easy, migration it's a very easy process okay very easy process we don't need any technical consultants for conversions okay so just okay. ready made templates oracle is providing you can go and download from oracle website and uh, ask the business users to provide the data within this and it will against that template you can generate the csv files automatically those files you have to submit to the application we have to first we have to place those files in the interface and then you can import into base tables that's how the setup should be ready i mean the data would be ready it could be master data transactional data okay so that files fb di templates it is macro based enabled templates right so these templates no not macro enabled ideally the macro enabled templates are required if you have a online connectivity with the instance for that we have a separate templates called as adfdi okay which are equal to web adi in ebs oh okay We'll be working on all these FBDA templates, ADFDI, draft implementation templates. Is all we have as a part of our course. We should understand. Okay. Yeah. My question is finally. Uh, sorry. Uh, my question is, uh, in which format you are saying that XML format only? Cloud instance. Like the setup like the 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 okay. you can extract the setup from the instance only in the xml format okay okay with xml tagging only extract from the it is extract from the instance as xml tag right exactly exactly then how the system is accepting uh, through which format same format only it will accept okay okay thank you same file only it will load if the file is in that xml tagging format only it will accept okay fine thank you yeah thanks so any questions from anyone please if no questions we can wind up for today we'll connect tomorrow same time okay seems to no questions that's all for today thank you all have a good and good night see you tomorrow